Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Clint sent me this image of Machu Picchu that he took. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I go about processing this image. Often when I have landscape images that in my mind think that they'd look good in color and in black and white, what I'll often do is before I even begin processing it, I'll create a virtual copy and I'll process the original raw file in color and then after that I'll go to the virtual copy and process that in black and white. And that's what I'm going to do with this image. I think it's a really cool image and I, I'm just wondering what it would look like if it were black and white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the F6 key on my keyboard to open up the film strip and I'm going to create a virtual copy by holding in the command key and tapping on the apostrophe key. That's the keyboard shortcut on a Mac to uh, get a virtual copy. Um, on a PC I believe it's control apostrophe. Um, just correct me if I'm wrong. So I have two versions of the image. Both of them aren't processed at all. This is the original raw file as you can see there. And there is the copy which is the virtual copy. So I'm going to work on the original raw file first. I'm going to close down that film strip again. And I'm just going to start processing. And I really am going to do pretty much what I always do uh, to a landscape image. Nothing too much out of the ordinary here. First of all, I'm going to go to the Basic tab. I think the white balance is fine, and I like the Adobe Color Profile, so I'm not going to do anything there. Um, in the Highlights, right in here, there's no detail at all over in here. I'm going to take Highlight Slider down and just see if I could tease out a little detail. And you can see I'm starting to right in here, right in here. So I'm starting to get a little detail there. I actually brought it all the way down. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the shadows. This is kind of like, you know, Lightroom Processing 101. You bring down the highlights, open up the shadows to begin with. You're making the image flat. Then what you're doing after that is you're adding contrast selectively to the image by beginning with the whites and the blacks. So what I'll do is I'll go to the white slider now and I'll hold in the option key on my Mac. It's all key on a PC and I'll click down there. The screen will turn white and I'll move that to the right till I see some colors coming through. I'm starting to clip particularly the blue channel and where I'm clipping or showing white on the screen, I'm clipping all three channels. Then I'll just bring it back until all that clipping disappears. We don't want to clip the highlights, at least I don't like to, because then you're blowing out the highlights and you won't have any detail in those parts of the image at all. And I was just pulling down highlights to get some detail back in here. So I don't want to, definitely don't want to lose that detail with my whites adjustment. Now with the black slider, again, I'll hold in the option key on my Mac, click on that black slider. This time the screen turns white. I'll move it to the left until I see some colors come through. You can see I'm clipping the green channel, which is expected because there are a lot of greens, trees, and stuff down there. Now I don't mind clipping the shadows that much. Of course, if I print that where it's black, that's just black ink will be put down. I won't have any detail. But I like to clip the shadows a little bit. I think it gives my image some tonal depth. So I like to do that. So I just moved four sliders so far. Uh, there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. You can see I think it looks a little more balanced now. Now, clarity and texture. Um, I'm going to bring in some clarity first. I usually like to work these sliders from the bottom up. I'm not going to do anything with dehaze. I'm not going to add any more haze or try to remove haze with that. So I like to work these from the bottom up because they're more heavy handed from the bottom up, meaning D, D Hayes is going to do some drastic things to the image if you move that. Clarity does drastic things, but not as much as D Hayes might do. And then texture is a little more subtle than the other two. So I like to work them from the bottom up for that reason. I'll add some texture, quite a bit actually. Maybe that's a little too much. And a little. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. I added clarity and it might have been a little bit too much. Then I'm going to add texture. Just like that. Kind of zoom in, make sure I'm just not making it too over the top. 
and it looks pretty good right there. I'm not going to do any vibrance or saturation. I often don't. Uh, sometimes I'll come back to that. I think I did last week with the image I did last week. I did some HL cell adjustments, then I went back and added a little bit of saturation. I might do that here. I don't know. But what we'll do is we'll close that down. I'm not going to do anything with tone curve. We'll go to the HSL. I like to start with luminance um, here. And I rarely change the hue of colors. I mentioned uh, in previous videos that I try to, with landscape images, more most often keep it realistic. Like I remember seeing it. Now, obviously, I wasn't at Machu Picchu. But I try to keep it um, looking like it looked when I was there. And similarly, I want to do that here. I just want to make it as visually pleasing as possible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to adjust luminance of specific colors to just give me some more tonal depth or tonal range. And usually what I'll do is I'll bring, I'll make the yellows brighter and I'll make the uh, greens darker when I'm dealing with anything that has like grass and trees in it. And just doing that with luminance, I'll do a before after. There's before. Now, like, look at this patch of grass right here. All right, there's before and there's after the adjustments. You can see how it's just bringing out some of the detail and the tonal variations of the grass. That's why I like to do that. Similarly, these trees down here, there's before and there's after. So it just kind of brings out some more tonal, like, variation. Uh, blue might affect the clouds a little bit. So I could kind of move that around and bring that down a little bit. And then I'll go over to saturation. And I think there's a lot of green here, right? So I'm just going to increase the saturation of the green a little bit. And that's it. And I actually think I'm done. Uh, he shot it. Let me see. I hit I. Uh, ISO 100. So super low ISO. There's really no noise to speak of. Not much to worry about here. Um, I'm not even going to add any noise reduction. By default, when I imported the image into Lightroom, it gave it a sharpening amount of 40, a color noise reduction of 25. I'll just leave those defaults and not do anything. I think I will go to the effects, and I'll just add a dark, very slight dark vignette just to bring it more kind of in towards the middle. And here is before, and there's after. Before, after, and there is my edit on Machu Pichu. Now, let's, I mentioned, I want to see what it would look like in black and white. So we'll go to the virtual copy. And again, I'll go to the basic tab and I'll immediately convert it to black and white. I'll immediately go down to the highlights, just like I did before, and bring those down until I see some detail come in those clouds. I'll open up the shadows, make the image flatter. Then I'll selectively introduce some contrast by moving the whites up until I, just before I clip and the blacks down, and I'll clip a little bit down there. I don't mind doing that. Then, um, let's see what dehaze. No, nope, don't like that. I'll add some clarity. Clarity looks pretty interesting. Quite a bit of clarity I added. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately jump to the black and white mix. And here, we could adjust the tone of different areas the image based on what color those areas were when the image was in color. For example, we know there was a lot of green in the image, right? So if I go to the green slider and I move it to the right, whatever was green in the original image will get brighter. And when I move it to left, green will get darker. So you could affect those tones, similar to what I did before, but we were working with the colors. So um, like I'll bring the yellows up again. Pretty much the same thing I did uh, before. Let's see what blue does. You know, kind of bring those blues down a little bit. And orange, orange moving the buildings a little bit, the ruins, I should say. And I think that's pretty good right there. I think I'll jump right down to effects and add that vignette. Okay, and there's my color version of the image. Let me bring up that film strip again. So there's the color version, and there's the black and white version. Color version, black and white version. I think I misspoke before. And said the black and white version was the color version. I don't know, might be losing my mind. But there is the black and white version, and there is the color version, and there is the original image. So original image, color, black and white. Which one do you like better? Let me know in the comments below. 
And thank you, Clint, for sharing your image with us. I really do appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.